let me open this up here a little bit. These are the outputs. Track 10, for example, plays the LM7, a drum module. Track 11 plays a synthesizer, the JX16. And track 12 plays the universal sound module again. Um, and you can see if I click on track 10, have a look at the track info, have a look at the output, it says LM7 here as well. And if I go down to track 11, output is JX16, track 12, universal sound module, universal sound module again. I've got two track 12s here, these are just names, you can always change names, let's call this one track 13. To show you what you can do with the inspector settings, I will start playback, and um, this time I'll make sure that cycle mode is switched on, which means that as soon as the cursor gets to the right position, it'll jump back to the left position and carry on playing the same part over and over again. Now, you can change outputs either here, choose the JX16, or you can change the output here. Another thing that you can change in the inspector is the channel number. We could change the channel, channel 3. Channel 4, and as you can see, whenever I change the channels, this channel number here changes as well. And if I change it here, it changes there as well. A patch name is the actual sound, so I can change it to a CTAR sound, and in order to make the patch name visible here as well, I need to right click in this area. And just select patch name. And there's the CETA sound. Ten sides. Now these are track settings. I can also change the name of this track. Let's call it solo or lead part. In order to see these things a bit better, you can open up your track listings. You might have seen that whenever I change the patch name, the, um, the program number changes as well. Now, acoustic grand piano is program number one, and the, and the bright acoustic piano is program number two. If I go this, if I change this one to program number three. I've just right clicked on the mouse, now I've left clicked to go down, one and now I right click, right click. It goes to electric grand piano, which is the third sound here, and the honky tonk piano will be program number four. Obviously if I put in a higher number, let's say I had 67 before, let's do 68. Baritone sax, and the tenor sax is going to be 67. The highest number you can type in here is 127, which will take you right down to the bottom of the sound bank. Uh, what am I saying? 128 in this case. Gunshot 128, and the lowest number was number 1. We did that before. If you go one further down, it's classed as off, which means there's no change at this particular time. So number 1 is our first number in our sound module, and 128 is the highest number in the sound module. Certain sound modules um, count from 1 to 128 and others count from 0 to 127. You can see these different modes by clicking on this drop down menu here and depending on what sound module you use you choose either 0 to 127 or 1 to 128. Basically if you've got a synthesizer or a sound module and you've got your manual with, with it as well you look in the back of the manual when it says MIDI implementation table, that's what it's usually called, and, um, and find out what number your piano sound is, for example. And if your piano sound is in the manual, if it says zero, program number zero, piano sound, then you um, switch, down, switch on to this one here. And if it says your first program sound or your first sound, P1, 
piano or whatever the sound is is number one, then obviously you need to choose this mode. And sound modules use this function here, A11 to B, A8. These are two groups, group A and group B, each containing eight bangs with eight, eight programs in each. So if I select that one and go down, B81, the next one's going to be B78. See there, I've got eight programs here, which I'm counting down. That's the last of the eight programs, and now I'm going to the next bank, bank six, and I start with the eighth program again. If I type in a one, this one is classed as off, and the next one is A11. Let's type in a two. Yeah, if you're in this mode and you type anything else but these codes, then um, then it will just class it as an off. For example, if I type A36, I get A36. If you want the piano, you can also just cut on here again, A11. A quick word about MIDI channels. This little box here shows you what MIDI channel you've selected for a certain part or a certain track. You've got channel numbers from 1 to 16. With general MIDI instruments, channel 10 is usually always reserved for the drums, but there are exceptions. And if you've got a sound module which is multi-timbral, which means it can support or it can play back different instruments at the same time, i.e. a bass sound, a drum sound, a piano sound, a string sound, a brass sound, all at the same time, then usually those instruments can receive data on different channels at the same time, and, um, and therefore you need to be able to route your tracks to those particular channels to to send out the data into those sound modules. Here for example I've used I'm using this universal sound module and I'm sending out information on channel one and also on channel two. If I solo channel one and unmute channel two you can hear the synth brass coming in there on the on the bars. There again, and also the um, the lead part playing. Both of those are playing on the universal sound module, which is multi-temporal. Now, um, the JX16, for example, is not multi-temporal. It only supports one instrument at any one time, even though it's um, it's receiving data on on two on two different um, channels, for example. I'll set this one up for you. I'll, I'll take this track here, copy it down. So we've got this one here playing on the JX16 twice. Now I change the channel number here. Nothing happens. Okay, well, I can imagine you're saying, well, I haven't changed the sound on this one here yet. I'll just do that. And you can hear, even though I'm sending out two tracks on two different channels, the actual program name, sound name, has become the same on both again. So if I go back to the original one, solid backing, it changed it up there as well, even though I've got two different channels here. Whereas if I do the same thing with the universal sound module, let me delete this track here first. Delete track, yes. Okay, this is the sound. Now if I change the sound down here to an um, organ sound, it didn't affect this one up here. And it doesn't matter what channel you use. Sometimes if you change the channels, you need to reinitialize the instrument sound. Go to channel 15. 15 is something, something else. Church bells. I need to reinitialize the violin sound. And if I go for channel 10, my lead part has turned into a percussion part. Because channel 10 is usually always reserved for for the percussion bits and the drum bits on general MIDI instruments. As I say, usually, always. 
This instrument field appears, a combination of output and channel. I've selected this track here, track 11, which outputs onto the JX16 and it's on channel 1 at the moment. And you can see here instrument JX16 channel 1. Instrument means output, i.e. sound module and the channel. It doesn't actually mean piano or brass or string. But you can, for example, go in here. Let's play around with it a little bit. Let's go for JX16 channel 5 and see what happens. This changes to channel 5. Also, you've got the 0, 5 here at the end. And here you've also got the channel 5 now. It was a channel 1 before. I'll do the same thing again. Channel 1, channel 1, channel 1, 0, 1. And if I choose um, the universal sound module here on channel 6, universal sound module, channel 6, channel 6, and because the name of the instrument is that long, you can't see the 0, 6 here at the end. You can also set up instruments and give them your own names. You could call this one, this combination, Universal Sound Module Channel 6, you could call it the um, the X Factor. Okay. So now whenever you choose the X Factor, Channel 6, this one comes up. So if I go down here and I want to choose the X Factor, then it switches to the Universal Sound Module and Channel 6. I do the same thing with that one up here. Channel 6. Um, but as I say, this is not the actual sound of the instrument. This one is, is, is running with the X Factor setting at the moment, but it's still... Let's give it a piano sound. Let's solo it. So it doesn't really make a difference to the sound. And also if I change the sound here, the instrument here remains the same because we're still using the same sound module on the same channel.